As there's a drive in a deep left field by Castellanos, it will be. Oh man, it's right. eight o'clock. And so that'll make it a. I don't need the spotlight. I shine just fine. Hi, I'm Karma, and yes, I am a bitch. Brav Bros. Alright, ready? Oof. Three, two. Good evening, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Brav Bros, your favorite podcast from the bros for everybody. For whoever wants to listen, I am your co-host, Steel Russell, joined, as always, by the one and only Skeet Skeet McGeet. What's up, Skeet? Oh, March Madness is almost over, but March Sadness is here, am I right? <laughs> How long have you been waiting for that I just one? thought of it. <laughs> yeah, you could say that again. Look. You tried to say in the last episode, the weather's been nice. First of all, it has not. We had like one break on Sunday. Well, you don't have to do this again. It's just depressing, bro. It's like it's rained all day. It's going to rain all day tomorrow. Well, I'm all day sad because day. VPR kind of pisses me off and it's just annoying. I think it was all encompassing for me this evening. Okay. Plus, yeah. I did my taxes today. Oh, yeah. TurboTax. That's not a plug for TurboTax, but Jesus Christ. You want to talk about something that it's almost like driving in Philly. And you're like totally unaware, and you hit one of those motherfucker potholes. You know what I'm talking yeah, about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it, it's just instant rage. Goes right through to China. Yeah, that that kind of level of just like I was a I was a dick all day. I was not a nice guy. <laughs> Admittedly, I was just an it's asshole. Fine. It, I mean, you weren't texting me like an asshole, so I didn't know anything was wrong. No, but poor Dev, like I was just I had a short fuse. Not that I was like raging around the house. I was just like short. I don't know. I don't like being grumpy and i was like people think i'm grumpy i'm not actually that grumpy today i was a, today i was oscar i was a little old oscar the grouch today is that where like being a curmudgeon comes into play like curmudgeons enjoy being grumpy oh it's an interesting premise like you just said you don't enjoy being grumpy but if you did you'd be a curmudgeon uh, yeah maybe you're just like accepting your disposition as yeah. you're just grumpy all the time yeah, yeah i don't like being like that but today i was and uh the good news is the taxes are finished and at some point, it's going to stop raining, but I'm going to Italy on Sunday. So at nothing nothing should be making me sad. God forbid it rains in Italy. <laughs> I don't care. I'll be in Italy. I don't have to do anything. Like, I don't care. It can rain in Italy. And well, I'll well, all right. Let's it's relax. not going to. The, the, I know, I know. The forecast is 80 degrees and sunny. How about that? So get me to Italy, please. Any trunks? Um, I, I wasn't going to bring them, but now, I, you know what? I actually might just buy some... Like Italian trunks, like the really like short the four guys, four-inch seams, like the yeah, four-inch guys, and yeah. just strut around there, like like Brock. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. How's your dick not hang out of those things? You know, uh, you think about that. No, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. You see a lot of guys wearing those like short-ass trunks. And you're like, where's your dick, man? You get the moose knuckle a lot. Yeah, but you know, which is also like, I don't get the look. I get like you know the European vibe. That's what they wear. It's fine. No, no judgment here. Maybe they I've wear never... a tape and they kind of like tape it down. Like dick tape? Pull it around. Yeah. This is what people want to hear. <laughs> yeah. This is the important this conversation. This is me thinking about it, yeah. Yeah, this is what Shooter gets stuck on is yep. uh, where's your dick? Where's your dick, bro? <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to our new segment, where's your dick, bro? Uh, what are we talking about tonight? <laughs> we are talking about VBR and... Uh, VBR? VBR. So this is what happens on a late yeah. night. Yeah, it's getting wacky. I don't know why the hell we do this, but we do it for you. Yeah. You switch it up a little bit. Listening? Listeners. I said we do it for you, listening right now. Like If you're listening right now, we're doing it for you. Well, if you're listening right now, then listen up, because you need to go get your tickets to our live show on May 3rd at the Union Stage in Washington, D.C. We got Candace Diller coming out. We got Chris Bassett coming out. We got Ryan Bailey from So Bad It's Good with Ryan Bailey coming out to join us. It's going to be a blast. We've sold a bunch of tickets in the last week, so make sure you go get yours. Bring all your friends. Bring all your family members. Come hang out with the bros. It's going to be a blast. Link is in the bio to purchase. Anything else? No, that's it. All right, cool. Well, let's get on to some VPR, and we had uh, a much different episode than we've been used to, and... It brings me back to a comment that Ariana made before the season aired. And she said, by the end of the season, a lot of people are going to switch sides or not like me or change their tune. And I think what she was referring to was this episode. And I'm not saying I'm jumping across the street to Team Sandoval or anything crazy like that. I'm just saying we did see a much different VPR tonight than we've seen this season. Yeah, I mean, definitely. It's still getting to that point with me now that and obviously I know it's the elephant in the room everybody wants to talk about it and we're finally getting to the point where 
Ariana and Sandoval are actually talking to each other, if you want to say talking, more like shouting. It's more not talking. Like, you, can't, you cannot ju- classify this as maybe talking. Maybe change the uh, prepositional phrase and say at each other instead That's of good. to each other. So, yeah. Uh, but it, it's not that enjoyable for me. Mm-mm. It's just not fun. And honestly, the really the only thing that stood out to me this entire episode that I enjoyed was... Martin? No. God <laughs> fucking no. No. Was Schwartz and Katie talking? Me too. That was funny, and They're that's just... enjoyable, and whatever, and that's great. Everything else just kind of sucked. Yeah, it was a bummer of an episode to the point where we had a watch party tonight, and uh, a commercial for the Valley came on. I was like, I would much rather be watching this right now. What a turn! <laughs> I know, I know. And look, it wasn't necessarily a bad episode. It's just getting difficult to watch because it's like I know what's about to happen nothing's getting resolved and i'm not saying it needs to be resolved because obviously we understand what happened but at the same time it's like you have to film a show and if these two cannot be in the same place come up with a way to not have them in the same place because this is not fun it's not like oh they're going at it again it's like oh this is kind of we shouldn't be watching this (laughs) yeah i feel like it's a weird mix of obviously they have to film together they have to be at the same place for certain events and the rest of the cast trying to force them to talk to each other. Yeah. Or trying to get them to, you know, kind of, I guess, go after each other. And that's really what we're seeing is you've got a lot of people here that are worried about their paycheck. Like, how can we, I've got nothing to show you right now. If you're James, you're like, yeah, you're not going to show me go to a concert. You're not going to show me do this. I'm going to go just throw a grenade out there and just see what happens. Or Brock stepping in randomly and starting shit after he just had a discussion with Sheena, you know, an hour before the beach. Those types of things are, that's really what's kind of propelling everybody forward. And obviously, you know, the the scene with the pizza party, with the, I, I refuse to call it what it was, so I'm going to call it a pizza party. No, it was a water sommelier event. Refuse to call it that. I will refer to it. We're at the Pizza Hut party, which is very clear that it was Pizza Hut because they blurred out the rest of the box, but not the Pizza Hut thing. That really drove me crazy. (laughs) But yeah, aside from that, everybody else is like, okay, we've got nothing going on here. Everybody wants to see this. Everybody wants to see Ariana and Tom discuss things and yell at each other. So let's just do that. And I don't really want to see that. It's weird because it's framed as we want you guys to figure out a way to like be cordial which I do believe that that's the goal for the group, but the way they go about it in the moment is not helping anybody. How? But like, how did we get, if you're thinking logically, how did we get from... That's your first Somebody, I know. Somebody like James at the reunion screaming at Sandoval and everybody else screaming at Sandoval, Lala included, to, you know, we'd like it a lot more if you guys could get along within like four months. Look, I think that what we're seeing And I think that what people need to understand is in reality TV, I feel like timelines need to be expedited because they are living in a world where they're on to the next thing, on to the next thing, on to the next thing for the show's sake, for their career's sake, for their paycheck's sake. So I think that the rest of the group understands like, look, this is our reality now. And I also think that the more you're around somebody regardless of how bad they fucked up, you're going to start to find or try to find a way forward because you don't want to hold on to all the negative shit. Whether that's forgiving them or not, I think what you're seeing with a lot of them is, you know, from Lala's standpoint, I think it's framed by jealousy. That's where most of that's coming from. I think Sheena as well. But with the dudes, I think that they're just like, you know what? Like, he fucked up. Yeah, he fucked up really bad, but we can't just sit here and say mean shit all the time. Like, it's getting kind of tired. You don't need to be saying mean shit, though. It's the the crossover to, oh, Ariana should be the one to talk to him. Why yeah. are the dudes doing that? Like, who gives a shit? You would actually be, if you're a normal person, you don't want Ariana to talk to him because right. she's just going to scream at him, and then the entire mood of the party is going to go way down. Yep. So why wouldn't you just leave it at that and just talk to Tom on the side if you want to? You've gotten to a point now where Ariana understands that he has somehow wedged his way back in with the group and people are actually talking to him again. It doesn't mean that Ariana needs to talk to him. So why are we then rushing it to bring her into it instead of just letting it happen organically? Because look, she's pissed off that he's back in the group. She's yeah. pissed off that people are accepting him back. Eventually, she's going to blow up. But forcing the issue is going to make it that much worse and produce what we saw tonight, which was... Ariana not making a ton of sense when she was screaming in the first time. The second time, you know, we'll get into that a little bit later. But I just don't like the route that they've taken, at least at this point. I feel like there's more time. You can let it develop and let it happen organically instead of just forcing the issue. I agree. But again, your problem there is you're using too much logic, sir. Yeah, and I don't even think it's a reality TV thing. I think these people just do that and they're nuts. 
Yeah, but that's why we watch the show. That's, yeah. So without further ado, let's jump right in. And we start out with a workout with Lala, Allie, and Katie. And I was actually frustrated at this scene because we find out that Lala invited Sandoval to the water sommelier event, the water tasting. And that was it. We cut away. And I was like, yeah. well, I want to see the reactions here. Like, we can't just cut away immediately. Katie was about to say something, but... Yep. Whatever. We jump to Ariana with Anne, and we find out that Anne is interviewing, I guess it's like a soft interview, like a first interview of many interviews in this process, because she sits down with Ariana. She wants to be her assistant, because she's tired of picking up Sandoval's boxers and and socks and all of that nonsense, which makes sense. But Ariana says, like, maybe down the road, it's not the right time. And meanwhile, Sandoval is eavesdropping at the top of the stairs. Yeah, I, I don't really understand this move by Ariana at all. Because the damage is already done. Right. You are interviewing his current assistant in his house while he's in the house. Right. None of that really makes sense if your turn is to say, well, you know what, maybe down the line, when I'm out of the house, then you can be my assistant. You're already doing this. Like, don't soften it a little bit more and say... Well, the timing's not right. I, you know, I don't want him to be petty and freak out. He's already going to be petty and freak out because he knows what's going on and he can hear the interview. He's going to go and take it out on Anne, which apparently he did. And he's going to take it out on you in some way because he feels like you're stealing his assistant. I agree with that. But I also think that this is not cool of Ariana to put Anne in this position. Like, if you're going to have this interview... I and volunteered last week, though. She did. I'm not saying that this conversation can't happen. Yeah. I'm saying if you're going to do this for Anne's go sake... Go to a fucking coffee shop. Go to a coffee shop. Yeah. Get out of the house. And, like, yeah, Tom shouldn't have been eavesdropping like a creep above the stairs. But at the same time, like, they're both in the same house. You're having this conversation about poaching his assistant. Yep. Whether she's happy or not, it is his assistant. It's going to put her in a shitty spot. Like, mm -hmm. go conduct the interview elsewhere, especially if the end game here is, we'll discuss this down the road. And also, while Tom's, Tom's up there working out, maybe go back upstairs and clean out some shit from your room. <laughs> For the love of God, just go up there and get all the food and weird shit that you have up there and throw it out. Oh, boy, we're going to get into that in a little bit. But moving on from there, we get Tom and Sheena and Brock at Sheena and Brock's awesome, awesome house. And Tom has another plant. He walked in with another plant. He did. I love it. And I'm back to loving it. You are? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> You're on his roller I know. Coaster. You heard me laughing when I saw it, so yeah, I'm back to loving it. So in this scene, the only thing that we need to talk about is Schwartz's biological clock is ticking. It sure is. You think he knows what that means? Nope. He has no idea. No. Like, that's. I had a buddy in college when I was working in Pocono that came in one day and, and he just said, man... I think I'm just going to get my tubes tied. <laughs> That's how that works. Dead serious. Anatomy 101, baby. But moving on, we got Ariana and Katie, and they're kind of recapping the Anne thing. I didn't realize that she would have been crying after this. I guess Sandoval asked her to yeah, take where are the cameras off. I don't know. I don't know. It's a reality TV show. Like That would be a pretty pivotal moment. This, the way this episode started off kind of pissed me off. We go from... Them working out, not getting Katie's actual reaction, not getting the rest of the crew's reaction to Sandoval going to the pizza party. And now we've got this. Like, why? You were just in the room. The cameras were filming. Don't you want to see if maybe Tom says something? You know he was eavesdropping upstairs. Don't you want to see what he says to Anne afterwards? Yeah, but then that would make him look like a bad guy. And that doesn't That's fit the That's exactly what I was thinking. Yeah. That's exactly what it is. It's not on the agenda for the season to make Tom look bad. This is his redemption time. Yep, that's exactly yeah, what that, happened. It's such bullshit. I know it is. And especially... If you watch him make that girl cry... Everybody's gonna be like, "Oh fuck, Tom!" You're gonna, rem yeah. yeah, you're gonna remember that he's a piece of shit, and I yeah. think that that's what's the most important thing to remember, especially as we recap this episode. This is not Ariana's best showing, all right, and we're gonna discuss it. We're gonna be honest about it, but none of this excuses Tom Sandoval. Like he is still a big piece of shit. We need to remember that. And again, had he not gone on this press tour after the season, he would be in much better shape right now. But he's mm -hmm. an idiot, can't control himself, and came out here way too hot, and he's just burning every bridge he began to rebuild but regardless i that's the first thing i thought when i heard that she was crying and we didn't see it on camera i'm like wow they're really trying to drive this home especially for this episode because we get such a volatile ariana on the flip side you're seeing tom like tuck his tail between his legs and we don't see a scene where he made an assistant cry like very very different things that were being shown intentionally and i like people have said in the comments like what do you mean like there's no redemption arc it's like if you can't see what they're trying to do here man like 
It's fucking annoying. But regardless, Ariana and Katie start talking about Sheena tracking Max. And we've discussed this a little bit, how bizarre it is that she, how many, 52? 56. 56 locations. Like, yeah, Katie should feel a type of way about it. Yeah, you fucked Schwartz's best friend. But at the same time, Sheena's a psycho. You can't have 56 Nobody knows that this happened if Sheena isn't a psycho. Right, right. And then she blames Brock. And you know Sheena would have spilled the beans. Like that was, she was just putting that in her back pocket. She's not mad that Brock said something. She's she's not refreshing her location every hour or every 10 minutes at night and then the next morning if she's not going to tell somebody eventually. Thank you. And she she like says that the reason behind it was, I just wanted to make sure he got home safe. No, you didn't. Not after you saw that he wasn't home. She wasn't doing that anyway. She <laughs> saw Katie and Max vibing, and she's like, ooh, I wonder if they went home Yeah, together. that's true. I forgot about that part. Yeah. yeah. And then check the next morning. And then she tells the group, like, I just want to make sure you got home safe. Like, no, you didn't. No, you didn't. No, you didn't. Also, why? Why does know. he have to get home safe? I don't know. I don't know. Whatever. Whatever. It's fucking weird. But Katie talking about Max says she doesn't feel bad. And I said this last week. Like, is it a fucked up move? Sure. It is. But at the same time, no, she really shouldn't feel bad because of what we see later when she's going over Schwartz's infidelities. Like he was unfaithful throughout their marriage. Mm-hmm. He may not have boinked. He says that he's just a make out slut. We don't know. We weren't there. But at the same time, you were unfaithful consistently. So if she wants to like get back at you a little bit, especially after hearing that you made out with Sheena and lied about it for 10 years and she bangs your best friend who, by the way, if Max is a party to this. He's not your best friend. <laughs> yeah, it's way more on Max than it is on Katie. I agree. Agreed on that. Yeah, one hundred percent. But we find out that Sandoval is getting invited to this water tasting, this sommelier event, this uh, very high society water it's tasting a party. It's a it's a sommelier. Uh huh. And Ariana does make a comment where she's like, you know, Lala's on this weird journey where she's trying to heal and understand Sandoval. And I actually thought that her response here was pretty. Good because she goes, you know what? Lala's my friend. I'm going to go support her. One and two, I've never been to a water tasting and I'm curious. I want to go try this out. So she was not geared up for a fight. She was actually fairly understanding to the whole situation and just kind of accepted, like, yeah, I can go to this. It'll be fine. It was not fine. But I thought she handled herself well before the whole thing. But and now we've got sober curious and water curious. I wonder how many more curiosities we're going to see. Did someone say water curious? Oh, I guess She's curious Ariana's about water. Yeah. Water curious. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Fair. I don't know. I guess we'll, we'll start keeping track of that. Yeah. Curiosities. All the curiosities. All the reality. Curiality. Nope nope, nope. 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 Don't do it. You don't have to. What the fuck was that? <laughs> I was going to say something. <laughs> I got stuck, and then I sounded like Scooby Doo. <laughs> Whoa. Oh, boy. This is what happens when we record late. Ugh. But we get to James and Allie's house. They're hosting the water event, and we get to meet Martin. Martin's a treat. And I guess Martin has been on TV for this. He's fairly well known for being the water guy. Sure. And he's got a great accent. And I was so pumped to hear it because it reminded me of Simon, who I'm getting excited to see on Martha's Vineyard, which yep. this is what we need to do. And I keep forgetting. I need to plug that show on other shows. If you're not watching Summer House Martha's Vineyard, do yourself a favor because it's a great show. No, they don't pay us to say that. We just really love it. Go check it out. But back to VPR. Everybody gets there. Brock apologizes to Katie, and she actually takes it pretty well. She says, you know, if this is payback for me talking shit about Brock and his kids in Australia, which we still don't have an answer for, and I'm still not comfortable with that, and I feel like I forget about it, and it gets brought up, and I'm like, what happened? Because for all intents and purposes, he seems like a good dad when you see the scenes with him and his daughter, right? And I follow him on Instagram, and he was he he does stuff with Summer all that like they seem. He seems to be a good dad. So I think- then I'm like, what the fuck, dude? You have two kids in Australia. Have we talked to them? Can we get an update? Please. I know. I, I don't think we were doing the podcast by this point, were we? In 2021? I do. No, probably not, right? I have uh, no idea. May will, be, May will be two years. So no, 2022 okay. is when so, we started. Yeah, so we missed out on that. But I think you and I had talked about that. Mm, we did. Just on our own. You know, pre- yeah. po- pre- little pre-podcast yeah, action. This We actually watched Bravo before the podcast, yes. everybody. Yeah, everybody. Stop calling us out for that. Um, oh, they do, I guess. Yeah, they just don't even do. watch it. Yeah, we did. Yeah, we did. But I remember us talking about that saying, well, look, if you don't want to be on the show and you don't want people to know your dirty business, then sure. All right, whatever. But now he's so much on this show, 
You got to bring that back up. Somebody needs to bring it back up, especially if you catch him yelling at Sheena in public. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> like, which he does. Up. I know. Almost every episode. So seriously, there's a lot of opportunities to show that Brock is actually a piece of shit and make sure that we know, hey, this is what happened back in Australia, bud. We just we need, need to figure to it out. Like, we I just need, need to know. Something. Some kind of progress. Has he? Uh, we got something last year, the year prior, where he said he's in the process of figuring out how to see them again or talking to them again. We need to know. And it is not too personal because you're on the reality show yeah. and you're a mainstay now, apparently. So, like, let's get some info here, people. But we get a quick cut of a plane flying over. <laughs> Thank God. <laughs> so we need to know that they live by the Burbank Airport. So the plane flies over and Martin goes into his spiel. And they're drinking dinosaur piss, which is pretty cool. It's pretty cool. If you had a chance to drink dinosaur pee, would you? We're breathing the same air that dinosaurs breathed. Isn't that enough? We're all made of stardust, too. Yeah, Sean. isn't that enough? I guess what that is What the fuck did you just call me? I thought that was a Sean moment. Oh, God. <laughs> it feels weird coming out. Every time I say it, and I only say it like once a month, but every time it's I say it. butterflies in my stomach. You did? Yeah. You like hearing Turned that? Turned on a little bit, yeah. I, it's one of my biggest, biggest successes in life is that you are known by way more people, like significantly more people in this world yeah. as Shooter Magooter than you are as Sean Morrison. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I don't even think they know your last name. I just outed your last what name. The fuck for the first me. time Take ever. Take that out. Beep. In the edit. I think we have a beep button on the on the soundboard, but it's too late. It's in there. I think. I think. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> We've had this discussion, but they break out the $1,000 bottle of water, and I can't imagine spending $1,000 on a bottle of water. This is after the cum water. <laughs> Yeah. Because they're, they're, we need to... Yeah, what was going on with that one? I guess this really... It, it really wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. You were more entertained than you thought you were going to be. Cum water really got me going. Well... I mean, he shook it up and it just turned white and... And, and then they tasted like cum. Somebody said it tasted like seawater. He said I was on a show and he's like, they pointed out pretty quickly this tastes like beep. Yeah. He said cum. Yeah. That's, that's what he absolutely said. what he said. But yeah, breaking out the thousand dollar bottle of water. Why anybody would ever do that? I don't know. How many are there in the world? Who knows? Martin should Martin know that. Martin should know that. Should, that's a big one. If you know that there's only one currently in the United States, which could be bullshit because he opens it right away and he's like, look at me. He seemed very gung-ho about a $1,000 bottle. Yeah, water. I mean, you shot the, the cork all the way across the yard. You could have gotten that, too, if you're going to have that bottle when you want the cork to. I, I don't know. That was going through my mind. But, yeah, you shoot that thing out and then you start dumping it out. It tastes like water. Definitely not tap. That's what every Yeah, that's the funniest line because you can tell Sheena's trying to be nice. She's yeah. like, mmm, this not tap. Yeah, yeah, you're correct. No, I was I was very much Katie during that entire thing. Like this yeah. is really <laughs> stupid. Can we go inside and drink? Yeah. Well, I enjoyed it. You enjoyed it too. So it was a funny scene, but but that's when the pizza arrives for this pizza party, as you want to call it. And they forgot the ranch. So Sandoval, and you can tell what he's doing. And Ariana was right. Like he is doing the most intentionally, where he's like, he walks in that room intentionally, he walks across the room intentionally, then he's like, oh, I'll go. I'll be the hero and run after it because I'm a good guy now. And he runs out of the house, he's extra loud about it. Hey, man, that is exactly what he's doing. He's yes. not trying to be the good guy, he is trying to do the most. But he walks back in, and Ariana's talking shit openly about him. Calling him out for what he's doing, that's fully in line. Yeah. Because we all know what he's doing. If you want to call him out for what he's doing, he can. you can do it loud enough so that he can hear it, so that you know... And he knows what you're talking about. That's entirely fine. I didn't have any issues with that. And when he comes back in, he's like, oh, no, I just have to deal with like walking past her while her and all of her friends are just talking about me. It's like, yeah, you do. Yeah, you do. You're a piece of shit. Of yeah. course you do. You shouldn't be there. You should be hiding outside with your tail between your legs and just happy that nobody's yelling at you in this moment. And I think that's the biggest thing to take away from what Sandoval should be doing is, yeah, just be in the background. I and also, it doesn't really matter because Bravo can do whatever the hell they want with all these edits in the production of making him look like a victim. Yeah, that's true. He's going to shoot himself in the foot eventually. But I'm waiting for it. And, it, I mean, yeah, it's going to Maybe happen. not on the show, but off the show in and he already real has. time. He has. He already has a yeah. million times. And they're still going through with this. So it, it's just stupid. It's bizarre. But after they find out Anne was sent home, they start asking, well, like, when she's not there, who's going to mediate this whole thing? Who's talking to who? And we get a quick cut to Katie and Schwartz. And I want to talk about this because these two still love each other. And it's, yeah. such a, it's such a bummer that he's such a shitty partner because when they're What do you cool, think about his shirt? Did I? It's not the worst thing I've ever seen. You know what he looked like? Oh, man. Um, yeah. Green shirt 
white collar. Fuck. Yeah. Oh, no. I can think I... seasonal. Oh, no. It's on the tip of my tongue. What? Buddy the Elf. Damn it. Yeah. Damn it. That's exactly what he looked like. Yep. That was an elf shirt. That was an elf shirt. But I, it's not the worst thing I've ever seen. I thought, but it's, uh, it's, it's, it's fun. Well, it's LA, bro. But like, yeah. Or are the socks and slides with that outfit also LA, bro? Or is that yeah, just probably? Shorts? No. How do you know? It's just not nobody. It's nobody. You're an, it's you LA. are a outspoken LA hater. Yeah. And you're not going to accept that that could be no, an LA look? Absolutely not. Fashion. He's lazy. F. A that's a lazy H U and well yeah we know he's lazy I know that's yeah. I'm saying the shirt can be L A but the slides and, and socks no and they're also like the Jesus sandals like the Birkenstock jobs. no they were straight up like Nike slides oh, they, they were slide even, slides yeah. I didn't notice that I thought yeah. they were Birkenstocks that's yeah. my bad yeah. okay all right Birkenstocks you're right. with socks also if you're listening horrible don't fucking do don't that do that please don't, I don't do care that. where the hell you're from don't do that <laughs> L A Colorado what New Hampshire doesn't matter but they seem to have a weird good moment based on the max thing like they go back and forth a little bit because you know schwartz does feel scorned because it was his best friend katie claps back because she has every right to because of everything that tom put her through but they seem to reach some kind of peace here more so than we've seen because we've seen them be okay with each other but it's still slightly contentious yep this is the first time where they're both kind of smiling through it they're just like yeah "Yeah, this is where we are now and like hey you can tell there's still love there, and I think Katie would even admit that there's still love there, but because Schwartz is incapable of giving her what she needs, it's just a lost cause. Yeah, it's definitely a lost cause. Um, but yeah, this was the first time that Schwartz, you could tell Schwartz was cracking a really corny, dumb joke. Katie almost laughed at it. There's still a lot there. Yeah. I think they should get back together. I do too. Just do it. It would make Come me on. happy. But no, no. She, what are you guys doing? She shouldn't. His biological clock is ticking. It is, but she doesn't need to put up with his shit anymore because he hasn't changed. No, yeah. He hasn't changed because he does this whole um, woe is me thing. And then you remember when he's able to do math in his head like that on at the beach. But like He's a smart guy, dude. Like Katie's This whole thing is pretty dumb shit. Too. They were both dumb looking outfits together. You know what I'm saying. I know. They were just they, they just would be together. If Schwartz wasn't so shitty at being a boyfriend, husband, partner, yeah. She does not need him anymore. I think like five years down the road, if they're still both single, there's a chance. I'm okay with that. So you're I'm saying okay there's that. a chance. I want there to be a chance, but he needs to be better. And he's not. I don't think he's, he's, don't think he's there a little yet. older, you know? Well, time will tell. Well, Vanderpump season 30, we'll, we'll check in with everybody. Oh, but uh, That's when they're on the Valley, actually. Uh, the that Valley's is the top the, Bravo oh show. Oh, my God. The Valley's <laughs> number one reigns supreme across all networks. And you get Katie and Schwartz moving into it. They buy the house they sold. There we go. And now get we're back talking. together, and then they branch off to when they're all like grandparents, and now you've got what do you call it then? I don't know. Uh, the Valley Retirement Home. There we go. There we go. That's Jax the... wears a crown in every episode because he's <laughs> the king of Bravo. Yeah, this is just it's all coming together. Yeah, we figured it out. But this is where shit hits the fan. It really gets heated because Ariana's talking about the dog situation. And she refers to Sandoval as an attempted dog murderer. And she goes on and on about how he left the, he locked her in the room and she ate all of these nasty things that were in her takeout container. And she's putting all of the blame on him and saying that he is so neglectful and locked her in there that he was attempting to kill the dog. I think we can both agree here. Should Sandoval have been in her room? Nope. Shouldn't have been in there. Should he have shut the door with the dog in there? Probably not. If you are a dog owner and you know your dog still gets into shit, throw your fucking trash away, especially if it is sitting on your bedside table. Yeah, especially if you're living in your bedroom with all those boxes already. It's just it's a really bad look. And I will say about this conversation, if you want to call it that, this was really just Ariana is furious about that whole thing. Yep. And never actually got to take it out on him directly. 
That's a good point. So this wasn't one of those, like, he was just passing by and she's just randomly talking shit. She wanted to get under his skin. She wanted him to react so that she could react this way. And she starts yelling and she's saying, you have no respect for the house. You're callous and you left the door open and you have no regard for the animals. Everything. Everything. And then he tries to clap back a little bit or defend himself or whatever the fuck he was doing. And she, I mean, Jesus Christ, like... To 11, she turns that bitch past 10. She goes to 11 and starts screaming, get the fuck away from me. Never look me in the eye. I'm calling 911? Yeah. Well, I, what are was, you going to say? That's where you lost me. My ex is in the house with all of our other friends and he's talking. And you're not going to find a lot of booze here, but you're going to find a lot of water? There's a lot of water here. One of them tastes like cum. Yeah. So come try some water and then arrest my ex, <laughs> ex-boyfriend. It's this fine line where I'm not telling her how to feel or act because that's nobody's business and she got fucked over in this whole thing. But she's also very, very, very intelligent. Like She's a very smart woman. So in this moment, it surprised me, I guess, more than anything that she didn't keep her cool more and that it escalated to the point it did. But maybe that's because there has been no communication. Not only that, and now that I'm just thinking about it, they have Anne running buffer. Yeah. So they don't even see each other. Right. So this is really the first time that the one. Well, no, last week they were in the same bar. Yeah, bar is a little different. Now this is everybody who knows what's going on and has been there the entire time. So it is a little different. And again, like even in your own house, like, yes, you can say you live cordially amongst each other, but you don't ever see each other. Because you've got Anne running in saying, all right, he's in the workout room. You can come downstairs. You have to go back upstairs now. He's coming back down. So you never actually see each other. Now you're seeing him and you've got people around you that you think are going to defend you and help you and protect you. So she just goes off. And I think once she opened that floodgate, it just all started coming out. out. And look, I understand it to a certain extent, but the call 911, what are you doing? That's too much. It's way too much. It's it shouldn't much. even be a thing. Like, and then she keeps what? hammering down like the attempted dogma. You tried to yeah. murder my dog. It's like, bro, even Lala goes to a confessional. I know Lala's Lala should own have agenda. said that there. That's my problem with Lala is she tries to be so shady and she throws out the that you have a trash bag commercial and she's going to do this and that and whatever. Do it there. Say it there. Do it there. If you're going to do this behind her back, you need to be able to do it on camera. I know what you're doing. You're doing it for the show. You want to drive it home. You want to take Sandoval's side because you want it to be a little more dramatic, whatever. You know what would really help is if you said it there because then everybody gets involved. If you speak up, then Schwartz is going to come in and speak up, and then Katie's going to speak up, and then it comes all the way back around and everybody's yelling at each other. That would be fun because then everybody can get it off their chest. Yeah, but everybody in the group, Everybody in the group is so afraid that she's going to cut them out yeah. that they don't say anything. Mm-hmm. We can't do this every week. One, people aren't going to watch it. it. I told you at the end of this episode, I'm like, I'm over this. Mm-hmm. Like, It's too much now. Like, We get it. These two can't be in the same room together. Scandal happened. We understand that. The group's reeling from it. We need to have some kind of movement forward. And if that means that these two don't film scenes together anymore, fine. That's fine. And I think at this point, we know that Ariana's probably not coming back next no, year. No, there's no way. There's just no way it fits into the circle. So whatever. Just abandon ship. Who cares anymore? Yeah, it's not pushing the needle anymore. It's no, it's no longer fun. But I need to ask you this. Do you think that a lot of the attempted dog murder narrative and the fact that she says it 15 times, is that a guilty conscience? And she's trying to absolve herself by putting all the blame on Tom? Or does she actually believe that she has no wrong here? Like, I'm not saying that Tom's not in the wrong for locking the dog in the room, but like she left the shit on the table. Yeah, no, I think that she's blaming Tom 100%. You don't think she has any remorse for this at all? I don't think so, no. I think that's bullshit. Yeah. You know what? Like, I don't think that's okay. You left the shit out. Yep. Your dog ate skewers and some fucked up chicken. The way that she phrased it, too, it sounded like it was just trash. Like, it was just the box with the skewers in there. But the dog's not gonna just eat a stick. No. Like, well, it's got know, the it's got the maybe, sauce on it. Yeah, like, maybe lick smell- the stick or something. I, no, I don't whoa, know. Whoa. I just... That's not true. My dog, not Louie, but my old dog Riggs used to eat the dumbest shit, bro. I pulled out. I'm not kidding. I pulled out. I picked up his shit one day. There was just the bottom part of a light bulb. You know, the metal <laughs> part. The rest was gone. It was just that. And then there was Jesus. another time I got home from a road trip. When I was playing baseball at Ohio State, here's a little fun dog dog story for y'all. I got rigs for $175 outside of Columbus in Quaker City, Ohio. I went with Civic. He came with me. Picked him up from a trailer park in the middle of nowhere for $175. 
great dog. But I came home from a road trip and my roommate had left him in his kennel for like a few hours. The night before, my roommate had given him a T-bone to chew on, which I said was okay. I get back and I look at his kennel. He's not in there. He figured a way out of his kennel and there is shit everywhere. Like spray diarrhea. And I'm like, oh my God, like rigs. It's a great story for a podcast. He comes flying down the stairs like a bat out of hell. And he's only about yay big. If you're not watching, he's he's a puppy. He comes sprinting down the stairs. And at some point he had chewed up my carpet. And and this is almost TMI, but I'm just going to tell the fucking story. So he runs by me and there's strands of carpet hanging out of him. All right. And I'm like, oh my God, dude, what's going on? So I open the door, he runs outside and he's trying to go to the bathroom. He can't. I get a plastic bag and grab the strands and pull. The fucking (laughs) T-bone got lodged and it literally goes like that and fires out. And he he gets done his business and he walks by me, literally looks up at me, walks into the house, falls down on the carpet and slept for like nine hours. And I've never felt like a worse person in my life. Oh, my God, dude. Yeah. Okay. So dogs do eat stupid shit. Yeah. Fair enough. <laughs> yeah. Now, I don't think going back to what we were talking about. <laughs> I just need an I excuse to tell that story. That's fair. I don't think that Ariana is taking any blame in this. I yeah. think that she thinks it's completely fine that she had that stuff sitting out on, the, on her table. I, I don't really know what else she's really thinking, but she's blaming Tom entirely i can't stop thinking about that story please move on yeah i know i told you but the scene ends with schwartz walking in and everyone's and everyone's cool with schwartz now like he has taken accountability somewhat but he's worked his way back into the group he's not the one that cheated mm-hmm. i mean he didn't cheat on ariana i guess he didn't right. cheat on yeah. katie yeah. but she looks at him and this is where i get frustrated with it because she looks at him and she's like now i'm mad at you by association like get out of here and cast him out. And it's like, you don't get to dictate the whole group. I get if you want to yeah. lay down some guidelines about Sandoval. Schwartz is not under fire anymore. Let's let him go. And when you do that, like, I do feel like she thinks she's the head of the group. Yeah, that move specifically tells me that she does feel like she can dictate whatever anybody else is doing. Because as soon as someone else starts talking, she's just not listening to them. Schwartz walks in, she does that. If you were, and what we just talked about, if you were just so, you had so much built up rage against Tom Sandoval, and you let it out against him, then it would still be about him, and you would be trying to, you know, rev it down a little bit, Mm -hmm. but you'd still be just yelling about him. Schwartz comes in, and now it's about Schwartz. Now you're just angry in general, so that's way different than just focusing everything at Sandoval and kicking him out. You're bringing him in. That tells me, yeah, you think that you can just cast anybody away. You can tell people what to think. You can get mad at them and cut them off. And everybody's just going to be like, all right, yeah, she's right because of what's been going on. And I think there is a level of, and I'm not going to Lala's level, but I do think that there is a level of she got so much after that. She Mm -hmm. got so many promotions or so many promotional deals, whatever. She got the Chicago thing. She got Dancing with the Stars. She's living on this Love Island. She's the host of Love Islands now. But in this moment, all of these things are coming to her because of what she went through. So I think there is a little bit of, I'm better than you. Do you think? I think there has to be. like, like a, Slight who, air. What, what normal person would go through all of that and then get everything in their wildest dreams and then come back to this show to the people that were screaming at your boyfriend of you know at the reunion and yelling at him? Why wouldn't you come back and think that you can dictate everything? Yeah, and I think that there's like a level to it where it's, I don't think that she's wrong for having these feelings. No. And like you said. If, I, don't, I also don't really think she cares that much. I don't think she does either. Yeah. And I think that in that moment, yeah, if this was she just. about Katie. She does care about Katie. But if this was all just the floodgates finally opened and you went way overboard because you've been waiting to say this or you didn't ever want to get to this point and now the dog's loose and you're just fucking screaming. Okay, fine. I cannot, I can move past what happened in that house and, and chalk it up to. She's been going through a lot, has not had a chance to like vent at all. That's what happened. Fine. But I think what you're seeing, she, she's outgrown the show. Mm -hmm. She's no longer a part of the show. And it's, it's better for that. Like she needs to go on and do her thing because she's doing amazing things and we're all happy for her. No one's faulting her for having this great success after she got royally, royally fucked. Like we remember Scandival. No one's taking his side. He's a piece of shit. We get it. 
I just feel like there's it doesn't work anymore with both of them on the show. And she has other opportunities. And I think that there is, one, an air of, I'm slightly better then. And two, I don't need to be here anymore. Yeah. And I don't think that she's ever going to understand where other people are coming from when they say you guys need to have some sort of conversation about how you know your house is being run, about being back in the group and not talking to each other, not aggravating each other. Because as soon as you start that conversation with her, she deems that as, oh, you're taking Tom's side. Yeah. And, and I get it. Like I, It's only a couple of months removed, so you're still in a fragile state. And you're already watching him ingratiate himself back into the group with certain people. And people are coming to you talking about Tom. So as soon as somebody starts that conversation, even if their intentions are pure, even if their intentions are for the show so that we can move on, or just the friend group that wants to just live somewhat copacetically, she's going to identify that as, oh, you're taking Tom's side and you're coming against me. Yeah. I'm done. Yeah. Uh, look, it's very... It's tough to analyze, honestly. It is really tough. Just because I don't fault her for it. But when you watch the scenes, you're like, that's too much. But then you remember, like, it's only four months away. And, and uh, in any normal scenario, in real life... It's probably like six months now, but whatever. But still, regardless, yeah. like, in, in real life, you would never be in this situation. Yes. You wouldn't have to hang out with the guy. So, like, it's this weird middle ground that's really difficult to tread both sides of. But whatever. We move on and we get Sheena and Brock at their house. And the big thing to take away from here is Brock is pretty much fully Sandoval, Team Sandoval right now. Because he's like, she needs to grow up and be able to have an adult conversation. They're both adults. The fact that she went off like that last night was crazy. Thank God Sheena said it. Because we all said it at home. Oh, you think that's English? Yeah, still English. Right. Crikey. There you go. All right, that's bad. I don't think that was English. That Those last two were not. No. There you go. No, that's better. I'm back. But I'm glad Sheena pointed out because I immediately thought it. Dev, who was watching with us, said it like Brock saying this. Like, who the fuck yeah. are you to say this glass house? Like, you are the most reactionary person we've seen to your wife. Mm -hmm. You fought in a clothing store and yelled at her in front of the people that worked there. Yes. You don't get to do this. To someone who didn't cheat on you on a grand scale. Right. Yeah. You don't get to be the one that says no. they need to grow up and figure out a way through this. You should just be. The thing is, when he has one on ones, he makes a lot of sense. With everybody but Sheena. Right. Totally. Yeah. He's calm. He has good points. Just do that. Don't go behind the scenes and point fingers when you yourself are guilty of all the things you're blaming other yeah. people for. It's a really shitty look and it's kind of his MO at this point, but. Sheena says something that that is also true. She goes, Scandoval is the best thing that ever happened to Ariana for a lot of reasons. One, you found out who Tom Sandoval really was. Yeah, in a very, very difficult way, but you saw who he really is, so you didn't have to spend the rest of your life with this guy. Two, you have every brand deal out there right now. We watched the show tonight. There was a big commercial that she was in. Yep. Like, you got everything you wanted, and I think that what they're trying to find their way through here is... Wouldn't it be better for you to find some peace and just be able to move past this and like enjoy everything that you have in your life? But on the flip side, she wouldn't be in this situation if she wasn't on the show. She would be able to move forward. You wouldn't see these scenes. This shit wouldn't be happening. She would be on to a better life, which I think she is. That's the what I take away from it is mentally, she is there. But she is forced to come back to this show and relive this shit, and she is past it, and that's why her reactions are so reactionary. Because she's like, fuck, why am I back here right now? Why am I going through this shit again when I have all these other great things happening yeah. and now I have to come back here and listen to all these idiots talk about how I should be having a conversation with this guy that fucked me over. I have to come back here and pretend to film these scenes with him when I'm fucking miserable and everyone's forcing this shit on me and I don't want to fucking do it anymore. Like, that's the vibe I get. That, that sums it up for me. Yeah, I think that was that felt really poignant i Good like job. that it just kind of flowed yeah thanks man and you didn't get mad about it either yeah well it's not an, i'm not mad like I, that's the thing like i've said multiple times like she's allowed to react the way she's reacting it's just tough to watch because the way that's yeah. getting framed and it's intentional on bravo's part to make her look like the mm -hmm. asshole and then i guarantee you after this episode comes out people are gonna comment like i can't believe you're still sticking up for ariana people that cannot separate the two things and understand that it's only at most half a year that's not she enough. Threatened time. to call the cops on him. Yeah, like how yeah. dare we? Yeah, did she overreact? Yes. Is it understandable? Yes. Yeah. Not fun to watch. No. no. Bravo knows that they're doing it on purpose. Regardless, 
the last thing we need to talk about, because we get that one scene with Ariana and Lucinda, who's a friend of the show, but they're just inventorying the house to give Sandoval a counteroffer, but we just need to get to beach day. Yes. Because it's, it's redemption beach day, according to Schwartz. It's not going to go well. I thought it was funny as shit when James draws the line in the sand. We've seen that scene a hundred times in the previews, but he literally draws a line in the sand. And this is the part that I hope viewers are like understanding and seeing. Every time Ariana's anywhere near him, he brings up either T, the girl that he was seeing that Ariana tried to warn, or he brings up that he's going to a singles event. He always throws this shit out there intentionally. Like, that's such a weird move. He's From, taking jabs. He is taking jabs. But again, the way it's being shown is that he's trying to sit to the side and talk to the guys, and he's talking about a singles night and this and that. This is where the group fucks up, because the group ramps it up by calling it out and saying things louder, and now people get involved that shouldn't be involved. And the prime example of that is they bring up Sheena and Schwartz. And it was kind of light. Like, that was what I was loving about this scene is the banter between Katie and Schwartz because they're now taking digs at each other while smiling. That's fun. Yeah. Because they both fucked up a little bit now. Like, obviously, Schwartz is way more in the wrong, but he has a leg to stand on a little bit because she boinked his best friend. So now they can just joke about it. It's yeah. fun. To a certain extent. And then, of course, Sandoval's getting involved. And And look, Katie brought him into it. Katie said, did you know? And he said that he didn't know, even though Schwartz said that he did know. And that's fine, because we can move on from that, right? No. Brock has to throw out there. Brock, the, the one that says they need to be more grown up. Throws you it. need to be grown up. No. Let me throw out a joke and just see what happens. And again, we must be on the exact same spot of the beach as we were last year when Schwartz brought up the Raquel. Or oh, yeah. That's a good point. Rachella. Rachella, yeah. That's yeah. When, when he James when proposed, proposed to Raquel. To Raquel. He brings that up in the same spot on the beach. You got to do this now. Like, no, we don't have to do this right now. No. You just had a conversation with your wife where you were saying that they need to be adults. So what do you do? You throw in a childish joke. You throw in a really dumb childish joke. It just joke. doesn't make any sense. Like, how do you do that? How, how do you go from that to that in such a short time? Like, that was just before the beach. Yep. What, you're having fun with the boys now? You got to throw some jokes out there? Yep. You know what's going to happen. That's a live grenade that you're just tossing out there. Sandoval didn't even want to answer it. No. He didn't want to even uh, like come close to talking about that. that's the lowest hanging fruit, dude. Like, let's not do this right now. And yeah. it's too late. It's too late because now doesn't Ariana, matter because yeah. now Ariana's engaged. Ariana's going to speak up again, rightfully so. And she says what we're all thinking. Why do we have, why do I have to be here when all you're going to do is just talk about this and talk about this and talk about this? Can't we just leave it alone? And that's how I, that's exactly how I feel. And that's where I don't understand where you're coming from when you're trying to talk about especially with Brock talking to him at the pizza party saying, Hey, you know, you got to sit down and be able to talk to her about this and have a civil conversation so that you guys can move on and figure this thing out. And then everyone else is trying to do the same thing. Like, Oh yeah, we need for the better of the group, for the better of the show, we need to be able to have the two of you at least be cordial to each other, at least be able to be in the same room together. This isn't the way to go about that. Mm -mm. Are you idiots? Or are you doing this for the show? That's where I battle with that thing. I, I go back and forth on it all the time. It just doesn't make any sense. You cannot complain. And I know Lala's not there yet. And Lala's the one who's complaining immediately. But you cannot complain about Ariana's reaction when you throw something out there like that. No. And it, it ends with Brock defending Sandoval saying he is taking it on the chin. Like he's over here with his tail between his legs. He left. He is trying to mend whatever he can with this group. And you're constantly forcing him out of the group. And again, it's this weird middle ground. And the show does it intentionally where you're watching it and going, man, she really can't let this go. And she just fucked up the beach day. And it's like, well, she keeps getting put in these shitty spots. Yeah. And then she goes on this rant about how Tom needs to hear it from the dudes. Like, you guys need to tell him to shut the fuck up. And yeah, like the, that's the thing, I guess, that gets glossed over in the first however many episodes is you go back to the heart to hearts that he had with the guys there's never been one where one dude has just fucking went off and said, look, motherfucker, this is everything that you did. Every time that he has these conversations, he plays the victim. He says that people don't understand. And then they let up on the gondola ride. Brock started to go in on him. Then they have a fucking kumbaya at the top of the mountain. Mm -hmm. Still with Tom saying, but, or sorry, Brock is like, but I know you got feelings, man. Like, I know you got feelings. Like, No. That she's right, but it comes off as brash and annoying 
because they're setting it up this way. And it's like a lose-lose for everybody involved. Because there's people that are going to see Sandoval on the beach with his tail between his legs and say, oh man, she can't give him a fucking break. It's like, no, she really shouldn't have to. But at the same time, she looks like shit because she's repeating the same thing over and over again. Stop talking to me, stop talking to me, stop talking to me. Elevating her voice, getting louder and louder. She looks crazy, even though she's not. It's just a lose-lose. And she says, why do you guys keep forcing this shit? Or, granted, she's the one that texted Katie and said, fuck that asshole, like I'm going. But... There's no way through this. There's not a fun way through this. There's not a reconciliation that's going to happen. If I got cheated on like this, I would never talk to my ex. No. I wouldn't look at her. Yeah. So that's the thing that is the hardest to keep in the back of your mind watching the show, but the most important just to kind of properly analyze what's happening because it's very difficult at some junctures because of what we're seeing. I, it's my head's a pretzel. Pretzel? Yeah, but not a pretzel. It's like a like a Wawa. That's like, like a typical shaped pretzel. No, like, like a, a Wawa those, pretzel. Uh, the one that's a little not in the middle. It's not crazy twisted. It's just yeah. a little twisted. I would argue that those are more twisted. You think? Yeah. No, because there's only one. The uh, typical one, because it, it, there's like holes and stuff in there. It's got some. I get a good pattern to it. But when you get a Wawa, it just like kind of goes up. Yeah, it's like a bow tie. And then it's just a bow tie in the middle. I feel like that's a tighter knot. Maybe. I don't know. Uh, Regardless. 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 It's tough. I don't know. I do know. Like, Ariana's not wrong. It's just she looks like shit because Tom's playing like the, the sad puppy dog. But just watch his press tour. If anybody has any sympathy for this man... Go back and listen to the Vile Files. Go back and listen to that podcast he did with Billy Lee. Like, he has not taken any accountability. He hasn't changed at all. So, yeah, the show is trying to push you one way, but don't forget what's going on here. That's all I can say, really, I guess. All right, that's fair. Should we do questions now? Let's do some questions. Let's do some questions. All right, first up here from uh, Ketura underscore Am. What do you guys think of Sheena saying that Sandoval has flirted with her before? I'm sure she probably has. That wasn't like astounding news to me. I got, yeah. I mean, they've been friends for a very long time on a show. Like, if you think about the early days of VPR, everybody flirted with everybody. So that wasn't like a bomb being dropped, I didn't think. But I'm the way he said it was that she always flirted with him. I guarantee he was flirting with her too. But that, I didn't think, I thought that was a whatever comment. Uh, from Liana B8. What would you have done as men in the beach situation? Spoke up or not? Uh, Shooter can tell you I have a problem with keeping my mouth shut in situations um, to a fault. So I would have said something. But I, I yeah, that's that's a double-edged sword for me. I would have been in the ocean probably. Yeah, Shooter, Shooter would have been. When things escalate, Shooter will say very loudly, this is dumb, and walk away yes. and go have fun. And that's where he meets other people, and he brings like five or six people I've never met back, and he's like, hey, these are guys. So I'm We're like, going to oh. play some spike ball. <laughs> yeah. That's you guys I, using this? Yeah. You brought it. Uh, okay. Yeah, we're going to go play some spike ball. See but you yeah, later. I would probably say something. Uh, from Emily Perillo, we're going to get this question a lot. Do you think Ariana's returning if, if there is an, another season? No. I don't think she should for her own mental health and well-being. And she has so much more going on that she she doesn't... She has outgrown Vanderpump. The rest of this cast has not. They need it. She doesn't. Yeah, I agree with that. Where would you put it, like, percentage-wise? That she comes back. That she comes back? Yeah. 15. I was going to say 15, yeah. All right, cool. I'm on the same page. Uh, last one here from Suze Greg Brown, Shooter and Steel. What color nail polish would you paint your fingernails? Light blue or gray. Gray? Yeah, like a light gray. Why? I don't know, that colorful I would guy? only do one. Like if I ever did it, I would only do like like the ring finger or something. Interesting. I wouldn't go full. Uh on Easter I had my niece paint all of my nails and I had to pick five different colors for each finger. Nice. Yeah. Well, it's fitting. You know, Easter, lots of different colors. Yeah, lots of different colors. Yeah. Poppy's painted my nails a few times. Uh but it's always the gel ones so you can peel it off really easily. Yeah, yeah, that's um, that's what I had. Yeah. But yeah, I yeah, I had that, and you told me not to eat it. What did you tell? Oh no, you no said it'll stain, stain your cuticles. Yeah, yeah. Well, that will happen. That happened yeah. to me. I had like the corners of my nails were bright orange for like <laughs> two weeks. It looked I had like this I was little sick. Brush that I just kind of 
washed and brushed it off. You have a nail brush? It's not. It's for hair. That wouldn't surprise me. You have hair. But here's a little my beard. Here's a little sneak peek behind the scenes. Shooter's very big on self care. Yeah. For for a guy that shits on sound baths and meditation, when it comes to like yeah, physical skin care yeah. routines and things like that, I don't want to look old. This is your guy. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, man, I hope next week's more fun. That was uh, yeah, hopefully we got it all out. I hope so. I don't think so. I don't so. know. I don't well, think I so, so either. I just just stop putting them in the same room together. It's not fair and it's not fun. Yeah, I agree. You got anything else? Uh no, I'm good. All right, cool. Well, Rob Bros are out of here.